and not accept submission to big power wills and to uphold Islam as the basis of a government. Today, too, the Iranian people and country is being blamed for its independence in its technical and scientific progress. These big powers do not want other nations to have access to new technical developments, even when they are indigenous. For over 25 years, Iran has been a member of the IAEA. And based on the provisions of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, it is entitled to produce the fuel cycle, nuclear fuel, and to benefit from it. All members, as well as the IAEA, are required to provide assistance to its members in return, the responsibility of member states is not to deviate the program towards creating nuclear weapons. The Islamic Republic of, Republic of Iran also is a beneficiary of the rights given in the IAEA, but it has been denied those rights and nonetheless has moved forward in establishing those rights. It has taken provided along the way thousands of documents to the IAEA disclosing its activities with all the activities of Iran in producing nuclear fuel were inspected by the IAEA and from the beginning of the reports given by IAEA till now Iran has not deviated from its program. Even so a legal measure taken by Iran is, has become a controversy for big powers. Big powers who enjoy nuclear fuel, who have also violated the regulations of the Non-Proliferation Treaty at times. The peaceful nuclear program of Iran has once again become a battlefield in the security our council, and especially among its permanent members. The decision of the members of the Security Council reveals the extent to which it upholds international law and respects the rights and of nations in a fair and just manner. Now, given that they have to follow the very rules that they establish themselves, the resolutions show that what transpires in the Security Council, especially after the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the former Soviet Union, is really only pressure by some big powers. When some powers in the Security Council and the big powers are being questioned for their actions, say that they are under pressure from the United States. So the question is, the political or economic pressures or the propaganda or threats staged against Iran will continue or not, and until when, especially when we are moving to achieve our rightful goals. How long will other states continue to want to decide for other countries? What is there in the world that says that world order should follow the orders of one government? My question on this podium to the world is, which government on this earth has used the veto right most? And where and on what subjects? Was it to endorse the right of the Palestinian people or the right of the Lebanese people or in condemning the occupation of Iraq or in endorsing the rightful access to nuclear power by Iran or in supporting justice and world peace? No. Then the next question is, are some governments the owner of the rest of the world? Is it possible to have fair decisions under pressure from one government? How is it possible to justify those decisions? Is it 
not time to move forward with just and fairness in making decisions at the Security Council. Should the people of the world not benefit more from fairness and justice rather than injustice? I deem it essential to point to two key factors here. The first relates to the structure of the Security Council of the United Nations. We're all well aware that the current structure of the United Nations, and especially the Security Council, results from World War II. The victors in World War II created a structure to control the world. <coughs> At the time, the world was divided in an East and West block, and for decades, East-West rivalry continued. Under this rivalry system, a lot of ag acts of aggression were carried out, but nonetheless, no power could go to the Security Council and blame the other because of the bipolar system. The structure of the Security Council, with the veto system it provides to Great Britain, for example, and the United States, is designed to give them impunity, almost full impunity. No member of the international community is able to criticize the United States or Great Britain before the Security Council with some hope <coughs> of getting a fair treatment. Any decision by the Security Council that it does not favor the U.S. or the Great Britain will not be allowed to either be submitted or, if submitted, will be vetoed. But then, on the other hand, if these countries are against other countries, they have the right to take their case before the Security Council and pave the way to condemn the other state and to carry out resolutions. <coughs> In other words, they serve as a claimant and as the judge and the prosecutor at the same time. Records show that Great Britain and the United States <coughs> use the mechani mechanism to their fullest advantage. Now, the result of that is the crisis we see in the world today meaning that regardless of the presence of independent states and governments in the Security Council, the current structure still allows, in most cases, unfair decisions to be taken. What that means is that the hope for establishing peace and security and viable stability is withering away on a daily basis. The second key point is the gap between these big powers and spirituality and spiritual goals and divine goals. As I stressed in the beginning of my remarks, the key to our progress is to submit to the will of God. God has asked his pious people to be his representatives on earth. And pious people are those who move forward with justice and peace. But regretfully, some world rulers follow their own needs and wants, or party needs and wants, or the economic goals of large military corporations. For them, God, truth, justice, and human dignity, and respect for the life of others are meaningless concepts. These people resist the invitation of others to become pious and refuse to submit to the will of God. Today, the expectation of nations is to place justice and peace as the basis of the decisions of the Security Council. Justice is more beautiful than oppression and righteousness more 
sweet, sweeter than wrongfulness. It is justice that...